Hello there everybody, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to another episode of Getting Sketchy where we create a completed sketch from start to finish in a defined time frame in real time. Now today we're going to be sketching this wonderful gorilla. Now this is a photo reference that I picked up from a wonderful site called Pixabay.com and our time frame, to, time frame today is going to be 45 minutes. I think we'll have plenty of time to complete this sketch in that amount of time. Now we're going to be working with charcoal for this demonstration but you're welcome to use any medium that you wish. Of course the principles are the same whether you're using graphite, colored pencils, pastels, whatever medium you're using. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, as I mentioned before, we're gonna be working with charcoal and I'm actually working on charcoal paper. This is gray charcoal paper by Strathmore. We're gonna be using a variety of different types of charcoal for this sketch. I'm gonna start off with vine charcoal and this is just a very soft charcoal that's very light on the surface. It's excellent for sketching. And then we're gonna progress on to using compressed charcoal. I've got a couple of compressed charcoal pencils and this is compressed charcoal in stick form. We're also gonna be using what's called white charcoal. Now this really isn't white charcoal. charcoal really isn't white naturally of course this is close more closely related to a material called Conte and it's just pigmented and I'm also going to be using a kneaded eraser to erase things so let's go ahead and get these things out of the way we'll put 45 minutes on the clock and then we'll dive right into this drawing all right, so 45 minutes on the clock. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna try to figure out where the top of the gorilla's head needs to be and where we're gonna bring the composition down to. So I'm gonna try to basically plan out the upper portion of the head and make sure that I get the entire gorilla on the picture plane here. So we've got our brow line somewhere in here. And then we've got the front of the nose somewhere in this section. And then we've got the mouth in this area. And then the chin. And you can see I'm drawing very, very loosely. I'm trying to keep my arm moving the whole time. And I'm trying to draw mainly with my shoulder. So once I've got things planned out here, that's when we'll start defining basically the dark and light area. Since we're working with charcoal, it kind of makes sense to uh, go that direction, which is kind of more of a painterly approach. We've got our arm coming out here and then the chest. Right down here. And I don't know how much of the chest we're going to develop here, but we'll go ahead and plan out where it is. And there's lots of different ways to start a drawing, of course, and this is just one way. So, um, you know, you'll find your own artistic process. You'll find what works best for you. The more that you draw, here's our ear somewhere in this location. The more you draw, the more comfortable you'll become with your particular process. And we're all a little bit different, but um, I kind of like to look for basic shapes. And although the shapes aren't total, totally noticeable here in this drawing, I'm, that is still what I'm looking for. And I like to break different parts of the drawing down into sections, like where the arm comes down. And it kind of bows out a little bit right here, just slightly. And we've got lighter values there, but of course we can take care of those lighter values with some of the white charcoal applications, which we'll apply in a moment. And then the arm kind of comes across here. Again, I don't know how much of this arm we're gonna describe here in the drawing, but we'll go ahead and plan out where it may be. And it kind of wraps around the front side of the body, like so. And you can really see that laid pattern starting to show up here in the sketch as we start to apply charcoal to the surface, you can start to see um, some of that pattern show through on the paper, which it is really a, a, a nice pattern for, uh, for drawing with charcoal. That's the name charcoal paper. All right, let's refine the head just a little bit. Of course, we can refine the shape of the head as we go along. And just make sure that we've got the eyes where we want them to be, kind of in this area right here. And there's a darker shape that happens, of course. And then we'll go back in and start to really start to focus in on the shape of the uh, nose or the snout or whatever that thing is called. <laughs> and then we have the mouth kind of here. 
and then the bottom of the chin. All right, now since we're working with charcoal, I'm gonna kind of concentrate on the dark and light areas that I see. And then I'm gonna establish those areas here with the, the vine charcoal, and then we'll kind of refine things as we go along. And you, you can see I'm drawing lots of different lines and kind of changing things up as I go along. And I'll continue that process throughout this drawing. So let's start looking for the darker areas. And I'm just gonna start up here in the eyes and I'll start filling this in with some of the vine charcoal. So basically what I'm doing is just looking at the, the shapes of the dark and light values and trying to get those in place. And we've got lots of dark values here and it's the contrast between those dark and light values which is ultimately gonna lead to the illusion that we're after in our sketch here. So now you'll also notice that I'm using the side of the stick for the most part to make these marks instead of the tip. The tip of the charcoal is gonna create uh, some stronger defined lines, which might not be what we're after here. So not in the early stages anyway. So it's almost like we're, we're painting to a certain degree. We're kind of blocking bits of darker value in. And then once we've got a good idea of where these darker values need to be, then we'll refine the process. We'll, or we're, we're, we'll refine the drawing as we go along. Okay, so initial dark shapes there on the head. And uh, the brow is got a lot of light value happening across there, so we'll leave that open for right now. Starts to get dark on the side of the head here. Our light source is coming from the left side, obviously. And again, we're not worrying about details at this point, just the shapes of dark value. You can start to see our gorilla start to take form as we start getting some of that contrast in place, those relationships between dark and light. Again, allowing ourselves to be free and loose with our marks. Don't want to be too stiff. And of course, we don't have to copy this exactly. In fact, it's not gonna be an exact copy. And that's really not what we're after anyway. Not with a quicker, looser sketch like this. Then down here on the arm, we've got a little bit of an area where the value gets a little bit darker. And then right here on the inside. Now, I'm not worried about the smudging that's happening here or anything like that. That's not a big deal. It's nothing to be concerned about because we can clean the drawing up if we want. Right now, just the darks and the lights is what our focus is. Now, this arm is in quite a bit of shadow over here. Even though our light source is coming from this side, there's still a lot of shadow. So it's a very focused light source. Just going to take my finger and work this in to a certain degree in a couple of areas and allow some of these edges out here on the outside to be a little bit softer and looser because the the back side of the head is going to kind of fade into the background and parts of the front side of the head are also going to kind of fade into the background as well
So now we've got a loose and powdery depiction of uh, the basic areas of dark and light here on the Gorilla. And now we're ready to start refining things a little bit. So this process is, or at least with this medium, the process is somewhat similar to using um, clay. And I know that sounds a little bit strange, but you know, when we're working with clay, we start with a mound of clay and then we, we gradually define things as we go through. We don't just start with all of the details in place. You kind of move the clay around in your hands and the more that you work with the clay, the more things start to become more defined. Okay, so let's start defining things. I'm gonna switch over to a charcoal pencil. Now this is compressed charcoal and I don't know how many of, how much of the materials I'm gonna use here. Um, we're just gonna start by defining the eye here. And again, we're gonna stay re very loose here with this drawing. We're just gonna start darkening up some of the values and start maybe defining some of the lines. And of course, as I mentioned, darkening up some of the values even further. This, uh, the charcoal pencil, or charcoal, compressed charcoal, is a little bit darker than vine charcoal. It's a little bit more permanent, and that's kind of why we don't start with the compressed charcoal in a lot of cases. A lot of times the compressed charcoal is best for the finishing touches of a drawing, adding those last and final details. A little bit of a couple of creases here in the brow. And again, we're still concentrating on the relationships of the darks and lights here. And of course, these darks and lights form shapes. And uh, if, as long as we get the shapes similar to what is happening in the reference, then those shapes of dark and light values, then our drawing will, will uh, translate to the viewer. Go ahead and start indicating some of the fur that happens up here. Again, we're gonna go over the top of some of these applications with the white charcoal in just a minute. Again, even with this uh, compressed charcoal pencil, where you might have the tendency to kind of stiffen up a little bit, we're still gonna stay uh, relatively loose and try to keep our arms and hands moving as much as possible to keep this sketch loose. Now, of course, drawing should be a part of your daily habit if you can possibly achieve that. I know we're all busy and we all have lots of things going on, but if you want to improve your drawing skills, of course, you should be working at it every day. And it doesn't take long. You don't have to spend a ridiculous amount of time practicing your drawing, but every little bit helps. If you just spend about 30 minutes or 45 minutes like we're doing here, Every day you're gonna see noticeable drawing improvement. And one thing that, that helps a lot is if you do set a, a time limit for yourself, like we've done here with this exercise, it forces you to kind of speed up a little bit and uh, the faster that you draw with uh, the, the speed that you develop is important because um, you know, the more that you control, the better, and the faster you are at drawing, the more subjects you can tackle and practice. So that's definitely a benefit. But also, a sketching like this with the time frame also helps you to uh, work under a little bit of pressure, which might sound like a terrible thing, but <laughs> um, it does kind of help you. It, uh, it forces you to work a little bit quicker. And when you're forced to work a little bit quicker, you don't kind of get wrapped up in those little issues of perfectionism that can kind of happen with some folks. Let's draw some of the, the wrinkles and things that happen on the front of the head here. And we might move the stout down just a little bit. So we're definitely not trying to create something that's perfect here. And sometimes it's that pressure that people place on themselves 
that uh, really stifles their development as an artist. They uh, feel like they have to be perfect with everything. And of course they play the comparison game or they compare what they're doing with other folks who might be professionals who might have spent years and years of practice with their drawing. And while it's always good to strive to be better in your art, but you, you just have to keep in mind that it does take time to develop your skills. But if you're not investing time through practice, then it's just not going to miraculously happen. You're not, you're not just going to out of all of a sudden wake up one day and be great at drawing. <laughs> You can experiment with changing the way that you hold the pencil. I'm changing the way that I'm holding this pencil just to cover a larger area here in a shorter period of time. And I'll grab some of those compressed sticks in just a moment. You can see how much darker this compressed charcoal is compared to the fine charcoal. Again, we're going to keep things nice and loose down here. You can still do some blending with the compressed charcoal. It's just a little bit more difficult. And the compressed charcoal, of course, is a whole lot harder to erase. So that's one of the reasons why we kind of wait on the compressed charcoal a lot of times. Until the last parts of the drawing, the last stages of the drawing there. I think I am going to define a line that comes across here for his arm. And that'll just kind of help to frame the bottom portion of the drawing. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy down here on the arm, as I mentioned before. Maybe just the outer edge here. All right, now with our compressed charcoal stick, let's go in and see if we can't make some of these darker areas a little bit more solid real quick, and then we'll switch over to the white charcoal. Then we'll start uh, kind of pushing back and forth between the lights and the darks. Then we'll dress the background, and then we'll finish this one up. So again, if you if you want to improve in your drawing, you just have to practice. And one of the things that holds people back is I think they they feel like they have to have all of these materials out in front of them and be completely set up and ready to go. 
and if you just kind of pack a sketchbook pad in your in your pack <laughs> your briefcase or whatever uh, or keep it in your car with you or just somewhere where you can access it keep it with you then you can find little points during the day little moments during the day to spend drawing anything that's around you and again it doesn't have to be a refined drawing to get the practice that you need anytime that you're looking at a subject and even if you're just kind of visualizing how you would draw it that also helps you improve drawing is something that happens uh, between our ears it's not not necessarily just the process of making marks it is a a process of thought and understanding the objects and how we see the world around us anyway all right let's zoom in a little bit closer here I haven't looked at how much time we have left but <laughs> Let's go ahead and start adding some of the white charcoal now. And uh, we're gonna concentrate on pulling out some of the highlights and some of the light areas. And again, this is not really white charcoal. Um, it's called white charcoal, but you know, it's charcoal is not white in reality. This is just kind of pigmented material that's very similar to charcoal. It's very similar to a pastel pencil. So if you are following along with this and you're, you're Trying to create this drawing and you don't have a white pastel pencil um, you can or a white charcoal pencil you can always use a white pastel pencil or even a, uh, a white colored pencil now of course the benefit to working on the gray paper like we are here is that we start with a middle value so that allows us to kind of push the dark and light values out from that middle value which means we don't have to start, uh, you know, if you're starting with a, a sheet of white paper, you're starting on one end of the value scale and you have to, you have to kind of work to make those darker values. So you're constantly adding darker values. Um, when we start with a gray surface or some other type of tone surface, it doesn't have to be gray, it can be some type of colored surface. Then we start somewhere in the middle of the value scale and then we can add darks and lights and push that value range out. But of course, you got to be using a medium that works for that. Um, you know, we can apply this white charcoal and uh, bring out some of the highlights. But if we're working with just graphite without any white charcoal, of course, uh, we we couldn't really do that. Uh, so you want to? I'm not encouraging you to just work on gray paper because. Um, it, because you should when you're working with with uh, materials that work with gray paper of course but if you're just working with graphite then uh, you guys know what I'm talking about <laughs> you might want to stay away from the gray paper but uh, you can always use white charcoal with um, graphite those two mediums work pretty well together but you just have to be careful if you do take that approach that you apply uh, the white graphite or the white charcoal before you start getting too crazy with your charcoal or with your graphite applications because the white graphite or the white charcoal doesn't go over the top of uh, graphite very easily so you can see i'm kind of skipping around here and that's kind of like what i like to do a lot of times uh, sometimes i'll work in an area for for a while but uh, since this is kind of a quick sketch and just kind of like to develop the darks and lights in totality kind of looking at the entire image you can see that white charcoal just goes right over the top of some of those compressed charcoal applications And then up here in the in the head and we'll kind of pull strokes out in the direction that the fur is growing again it doesn't have to be perfect just just quick loose marks 
to get those dark and light relationships. A few stronger highlights over here. There's one right on the edge of the ear. And we can also allow the gray of the paper to do some of the work for us. You can see the gray of the paper is showing through in areas. We'll go back in just a minute with the compressed charcoal and make some of these darker values a little bit darker and kind of refine things a little bit further. But we can still allow the gray of the paper to work for us to a certain degree. Get that other highlight in the eye and made it too large, so we'll tone it down just a little bit. Now I'm thinking about the directional strokes that I make with these mediums too. So a lot of that is determined by the form of whatever area I'm addressing. And uh, sometimes it's defined, or sometimes I make those decisions based on uh, the texture in that area. So you can see here on the chest, we've got kind of a strokes that kind of flow over the form of the chest. And that's just basically determined by the texture that I see there. There's, you can kind of see in the, in the reference how there's some wrinkles. And uh, so that's how I'm making those directional strokes here, just following the wrinkles that I see there. Same thing here on the bottom part of the belly, or the belly. And that of course adds a little bit of character and interest to your drawing if you make your, your marks a little bit looser, um, sometimes a little bit less refined, and a little bit of movement and kind of a feeling of um, this subject being alive. So you don't have to be super stiff. There's lots of reasons not to be super stiff. Sometimes there are good reasons to be a little bit stiffer with your drawings, but Add a few of these to the arm, a few of these strokes. Again, keeping things nice and loose. You can see how loose this is. And it's amazing how much our minds put together information without having to define everything completely. A lot of times we feel like we've got to get focused in on all the little details that we see on the subject. And of course that can stifle us a little bit. And clearly that's not something that we have to do. All right, let's go back with uh, some compressed charcoal again and just kind of refine some of these areas where we have the darker value. Make them a little bit darker. Fill in some of these areas of the tooth of the paper. And whenever you have a high contrast image like we have here, the the combination of white and dark charcoal obviously is a, a pretty pretty good combination.
uh, find the pencil that I was using there. <laughs> And again, I have not even looked at the at the time to see how close we are or how far away we are. I'm, I'm feeling like we're kind of getting close to the time frame, but our our uh, our goal here. If we go over a little bit, it's no big deal. Sometimes just setting your setting a time frame, a start and finish um, period of time uh, in a drawing kind of encourages you to to do it. Um, instead of just kind of thinking that there's an endless amount of time to create a sketch it kind of sometimes can prevent you from actually working on your drawing sometimes we just need that extra push to get started All right. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of contrast behind this guy um, and make the background a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and do that with some compressed charcoal. I'm gonna use this compressed charcoal stick. This gorilla kind of fades into the background, especially up here on the top. So we'll kind of soften, soften that transition there. Make it nice and soft. And I'm clearly using a lot of, a lot of pressure here as I'm blending this. And on the front edge too, of course, it's, Got a dark value up here too, so. Kind of quickly work that in with her finger. Again, allowing that edge to be a little softer down here on the arm so it kind of fades into our background. Yeah, just a little bit of it.
a few last refinements up here. Let's bring a little bit more of the white down here on the cheek. just a little bit out here. Um, I know that there's not a whole lot of information back here in the photo reference, but I'm just trying to help to define the back of the head a little bit more. All right, and there you go. I think uh, our quick sketch of a gorilla is now complete within 45 minutes. I, I think we made it within 45 minutes. I actually haven't been looking at the timer, but uh, anyway, like I said, you got to pick a place to start anyway, and uh, that kind of helps you to get going in the first place, and then you find yourself in the middle of the drawing process. So I hope that you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there, and uh, I hope if you followed along with this exercise and you drew it yourself, I hope that you're pleased with the results, and uh, you picked up some things that you can carry over into your own drawings. So thanks so much for watching this uh, quick sketch. Hopefully you drew along with me. Uh, hopefully you picked up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you want to improve your drawing skills, then daily practice needs to be a part of your routine. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I produce videos on a variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter, just about anything art related I cover here on this YouTube channel. I also have a membership program over at the virtualinstructor.com forward slash members where you can take a look at courses, weekly live lessons, lesson plans for teachers, eBooks, and more. There's a whole lot of stuff there. Um, I would encourage you also to check out three of our course modules for free. You can just click on one of the links here to check those out or in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.